Welcome to that lecture online and now we're continuing in the quest to figure out how they figured out the distance to the sun. And remember more than 2,000 years ago Aristarchus figured out that well in his way of doing things he figured out that it was about 20 times the distance from the earth to the sun as it was from the earth to the moon. And of course that put the sun at about four and a half to five million miles which is about one twentieth of what it really was. But there was no way to improve upon those measurements. What they had to do was wait until the moon was in the exact right position so that the sun will light up the moon on this side right here so that the side of the moon that is lighted was exactly the same in size as the side of the moon that had the shadow. And from then trying to figure out the angle between the, the line going from the earth to the moon versus the line from the earth to the sun, he figured that that angle made by those two lines is about 87 degrees. And from that, he was able then to figure out that this angle right here was about 3 degrees, which meant that this angle right there was about 3 degrees. And now we have this triangle right here. And you could then say that the, the distance d between the Earth and the Moon and the distance d between the Earth or the Moon and the Sun, or the Earth and the Sun, that ratio had to be equal to the angle right here, divided by 57.3, which is the number of degrees in a radian. And that ended to be 1 in 20. So not until almost 2,000 years later, in 1635, they improved upon that method. It turned out that two very famous astronomers, Nicholas Copernicus, who determined, well, he didn't really determine, but from his logic de determined that the sun was at the center of the universe rather than the earth. It was not a very popular idea in those days. And remember, he lived back in the, in the 15th to 16th century, between 1473 and 1543. And then Tycho Brahe, the Danish astronomer who was just amazing in making day, well not daily but nightly measurements of where the locations of the planets were from which Kepler was able to come up with his three laws who then Tycho Brahe lived between 1546 and 1601 they also tried to make this very same measurement and guess what they came up with about the same results so almost 2,000 years later, they tried this again and again. They had a ratio of about 1 in 20, thinking that the distance to the sun was about 20 times the distance to the moon. So they were off also by a factor 20. But then something was invented, the telescope. And the famous person, Gottfried Wendelin, who was a Flemish astronomer, came up with the idea to try this with a telescope. When he made the measurements, instead of coming up with a 3-degree angle, he came up with an angle that was less than one-tenth that much, an angle of about 0.25 to about 0.30 degrees. That was the new angle based upon his measurements with the telescope. And so then when he went in and compared that to the measurements that had been made before, he said that, wow, we were off by about a factor of 11. He figured out that the sun was about 11 times as far away had previously been assumed based upon these earlier measurements that had been valid for almost 2,000 years. So now instead of thinking that the sun, uh, the distance between the sun and the moon earth system was about 20 times the distance between the earth and the moon, he now said it was more like 200 to 220 times. He figured they were off by about a factor of 11 which would make that about a ratio of 1 in 220. So now he said that the sun was 220 times as far away from the earth as the moon was. Now, that was an enormous improvement. Not quite where the sun is supposed to be because that puts the sun at about 50 million miles when in actuality it's 93 million miles. But that was an enormous improvement. They really were beginning to figure out the distance to the sun. And so based upon this very primitive method that had been valid for almost 2,000 years and the new tool, the telescope, they were able to come much, much closer to the actual distance. After that, they refined their methodology. They begin to come up with all kinds of other methods to try and measure the distance to the sun and then try to find the size of the sun because once you know the distance of the sun, you could also find the size of the sun. Imagine what people must have thought. Wow, if he is right and the sun is 50 million miles away and now realizing that the disk of the sun is the same as the disk of the moon, relative size, of course, in angular size, and you project that out. If you knew how big the moon was, and they knew that, they knew the Earth was about three and a half times the diameter of the moon, and then they projected that out over this enormous distance to the sun, the sun would have then had to be like 50 times as big as the Earth. 
The diameter of the sun at that point all of a sudden became 50 times the diameter of the earth. This enormous ball there glowing away, bringing heat to the earth. Wow, they were really beginning to understand this and discover the sun, the enormous size and enormous distance between the earth and the sun. But yet, they were still not correct. They were off by about a factor or two. And so what did it take to come up with a more accurate measurement? Well, if you're interested in that, stay tuned and watch the next video.